now into the ticket office of Disneyland. <laughs> oh boy, let's do this. <laughs> I don't think the CIA is going to be trying to hack your second gen iPod. I didn't think so. There might have been a lot of illegal music on there. I wouldn't <laughs> doubt it. But, I mean. You were supposed to bring death to the flagships, not join them. Google has found a new way to piss me off. iTunes is a constant source of embarrassment. <laughs> Behind the scenes camera crap. Uh, here, tell us about courage, Bill. Tell us about courage. I am Nadella. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't do it anymore without laughing. I was going to do the whole thing. Welcome, everyone, to the Calling All Platforms podcast. I'm your host, Wes, and I'm here with Landon. Hello. And Caleb. Hey. And all of us are together, and we are here to talk all things tech, you guys. Woohoo! Because last time I was not here. I was playing what Caleb's children like to call is Cheese Santa. <laughs> it's true. Yes. Delivering <laughs> cheese to the world. Uh, yes. Yep. I work at a food manufacturing plant and i help deliver it so you definitely do that more than one time a year though it's true i mean could you imagine if you only got cheese one time a year that would be so sad right everyone would die I th- I'm everyone curious. would die <laughs> like <laughs> this is a vital service to society that you provide so it is true we're all grateful <laughs> at least at least to your kids right <laughs> you <laughs> they're very grateful yes <laughs> oh it's awesome. I'm glad I can uh, be of service. But anyway, we're here to talk things tech, not food. Unless you really want to, because we could really get into some recipes, you know, so cookers. We, we could, actually. We should start a food podcast, because I, I have so many things to say about food. <laughs> should we call it calling all foods, calling all platters? Huh? Calling all platters. Uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's actually awesome. <laughs> uh, hurry. We better make that quick. Trademark. <laughs> Anyway, let's talk tech. This <laughs> let's talk tech here. Uh, Caleb, why don't you go ahead and start us off? What do you What do you want to talk about? All right, listener, we are going to dive once again into the wonderful world of Apple news that is not actually news, otherwise known as rumors. <laughs> hey, it's Yay. been a while since I've touched on Apple rumors because they frustrate me more than anything else, so I tend not to dwell on them. Um, but There is a product that Apple has been rumored to be working on for years at this point, and we are now approaching what is rumored to be an actual launch date for this thing. I am, of course, talking about the Apple Augmented Reality headset. Now, to be clear, at this point, it's looking a lot less like a a mixed reality type thing from Microsoft and more like just Apple's version of the MetaQuest Pro, where... It's a full-on VR headset that has high-resolution cameras that give you an augmented reality thing, but it's still not like a true mixed reality Google Glass kind of whatever setup. So just to be clear, when we say AR headset from Apple, we're technically it's a VR headset with really nice cameras. So I'm going to round up all the rumors for this thing. It is rumored to be launching possibly as early as WWDC, but the current like direction everybody's leaning is that it's going to be launching alongside the iPhone toward the end of the year. There's still some people holding on to hope that it comes at the beginning of the year, but I think the consensus at this point is that no. Second half of the year. Uh, yeah, that makes the most sense to me. I think what's going to happen is that they're going to announce the platform at WWDC give developers time to do something with it because they're not going to announce a piece of hardware with no software other than the app after the Apple watch, because that was fun. Yes. No, that that's very valid. And I think that where the confusion may be coming from is that most of these rumors are coming from Mark Gurman and his, uh, his weekly letters that update people on stuff like this. Uh, And he has at various times said that it would be the first half of 2023 and the second half of 2023. And he's also said possibly early 2024. So I think that what may be happening here is it's like Landon said, Apple is planning on showing off the software and teasing the platform at WWDC in the first half of 2023 and then maybe giving us a preview of the hardware. But we're not actually going to see any hardware launches until the second half of the year. So just to give developers a chance to prepare for it a little bit and actually get some things onto the platform. Uh, And I don't know what that entails. I guess Beat Saber or something. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. 
Um, I mean, that's popular. Let's be real. It really is. So, so yeah, that's that's Apple's Air headset plans, and theoretically, we should be seeing it this year sometime. Now, the the rumors do indicate that it's going to be two to three grand. Uh, so that's awesome. Ooh. And they're going to be calling it the quote unquote Apple Reality Pro. Okay. That's going to be the name of the thing. Rumored to be processing via an M2 chip on board, along with some kind of dedicated VR coprocessor that is going to be doing, I guess, rendering stuff in addition to whatever the onboard graphics of the M2 are doing. So I, I don't know if that's just extra GPU horsepower to go along with it to help render what's supposed to be 4K lenses and whatnot um, at running at like 120 FPS, I believe. So pretty good for a VR headset. Similar specs to Valve's Index headset, in fact. Uh, As to why it costs twice as much as Valve's Index headset, I'm going to assume it's because the entire thing is milled from a single billet of aluminum and it's way smaller. It makes oh, it has an that, Apple logo on it. That's <laughs> that's it. Really, yes. what it is. No, it's. I mean, it's a standalone device as well. So, yeah, very premium device. It's standalone. Doesn't require you to be tethered to anything, and it's supposed to have very similar lens specs to extremely high end, uh, you know, existing VR headsets. So there's that. I, it's also rumored that this thing is not going to be coming with any kind of remotes for your hands so it's going to be doing advanced hand tracking instead of that and supposedly it's going to be so sophisticated that it will let you type in the air right like just keyboard out in front of you and you can just type on it they already had a really bad keyboard experience do they really want another one (laughs) they have had so many bad keyboard experiences let's be honest so (laughs) apple uh this is not a great not a great direction to go with this. And the rumors are currently that this is genuinely a pretty finicky input method. So, um, yeah. Now, you don't the say. reason, <laughs> no kidding. The reason that this is an input method is because supposedly you're not going to have to pair this thing to an iPhone or something like that in order to set it up and use it. It is going to be a truly standalone experience and you can set it up by itself without the aid of an external device. And apparently, you know, that's what the keyboard is for. So you can enter passwords and stuff like that. But if the rumors are correct about this keyboard entry, well, okay, if the rumors and common sense are correct about this keyboard entry being terrible, you're probably going to want an iPhone anyways to to pair it to. (laughs) So, yep, that's that's kind of where we're at for this this Reality Pro device. Now, Mark Gurman has also said that Apple is already planning to replace this thing as quickly as possible with a second generation of devices called the Reality Pro 2 or whatever, and the Reality 1, which will be a substantially cheaper device that is more mass market focused. So pretty much this first generation is just for the crazy Apple fanatic early adopters and normal people should not even think about it is basically where we're at with this. I guess the M2 is actually just not what Apple wants to put in it. Like it's not the chip that they want. It's not good enough, but they're releasing the product anyways. <laughs> so that's All right. great. Very Samsung of them. It <laughs> is though. Yeah. So yeah, that's Apple's AR rumor rundown, basically where we stand with everything right now. Uh, We're obviously going to see more details about this thing coming over the next few months. But at this point, I feel like enough of it, enough of the device is understood that pretty much we're just waiting for Apple to actually release something. So the next time I talk about this headset listener, it will probably have actually been announced officially. So there we go. Gotcha. All right. Now, I want to revisit something that we talked about on our last episode really fast. Like, I'm not going to go back into the whole, like, okay, Bing's AI thing versus Google's AI thing again and compare and contrast. But I just want to explain, I think, why. Because we we talked, uh, me and Landon talked a little bit on the last episode of the podcast about why, about what we were seeing in the tech press that was like, oh my gosh, Bing is like, it's a quantum leap over what Google has. They're going to destroy Google at their own game and yada, yada, yada. Like, why was everybody responding like that to what was essentially just Bing saying, hey, we got our our AI chat thing live a little bit faster than Google did theirs. Hey, 
Is it better than Google's? Probably not. Is it perfect? Obviously not. No. The thing had like mental breakdowns over the past couple of weeks <laughs> to the extent where Microsoft has literally lobotomized it. So, you know, it's it, it, it's a work in progress. We'll put it that way. Um, But tech press was still just very, the reporting was very, very strange with all of this. And this, you know, this past week, uh, Marquez Brownlee said something that I made me think about and recontextualize this whole competition a little bit. And I think makes it make sense why everybody is paying attention to Microsoft and why it seems like Google is doing nothing, right? It seems like Microsoft has jumped way ahead with all of this technology and Google is falling behind. They're probably not. But, and here's what he said. Bing has everything to gain. Google has everything to lose. Right? Yep. In the competition yeah. here, if Google screws up, they lose their entire business model. Because advertising on search is still like 60 to 70% of their revenue. Whereas Bing is like a, a tiny little blip on a spreadsheet somewhere in Microsoft's revenue, it makes them virtually no money. So if they screw this up, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, yeah. it it just doesn't matter. But if they get it right, then they have a chance to take away some of that pie that Google has been hoarding all to themselves for this, you know, for decades at this point. So that, yeah, like that's why it seems like Microsoft has jumped way ahead of Google. It's because Microsoft can take stupid risks and make giant mistakes in this space and it doesn't hurt them whereas if google were to do the same thing that microsoft is doing that eh, would destroy their reputation and would therefore destroy their business so yeah just just one last comment on the whole thing that's why it looks like being is so far ahead of google it's because they can do that kind of thing and run the risk of making a giant error where Google right. can't. So makes sense. Yep. I just it was a very it was enlightening to me and so just wanted to follow up make sure listener that you understand there really isn't that much difference between Google and Microsoft in terms of what they're capable of but what you are seeing is not necessarily going to jive with that just because Bing, they've got everything to gain. They can take as many risks as they want because if it works, holy cow, that's awesome. Whereas Google, they've already got it. And if they lose it, then it's that's the end of Google as we know it. Like the entire company alphabet is just, you know, changes fundamentally if Google loses this. So they have to be much slower, much more measured in their approach. So. That's my sense. that's my tech news. Just a quick quick follow up on that AI discussion. Um, and everything I've got else is is gaming stuff. So I'll hold on to that for now. Yeah, you know I, that makes a lot more sense. And and I think I think to add to that, like kind of my thoughts on it. I mean, obviously, and obviously everyone's kind of wanting to see what Microsoft does, so that's why it's getting this because everyone knows Google's working. So Microsoft just adding something, everyone's going to try and break it, which in a sense they have. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and so that makes sense. But yeah, put it in that perspective. Yeah. But what it, all it is is to gain for Microsoft. So that would, that's makes yep. sense. So, yeah. Yep. All right. Well, uh, Landon, do you have anything you want to talk about? I do. And I want to start off with some, Sort of Apple, well, it is Apple related. Um, I just want to give my thoughts on the new MLS season pass that Apple TV has come out with. It is this weekend was the first opening weekend of the newest MLS season. So I had, I dove head on into this MLS season pass thing. And as a fan of the league, in the US and as a fan of a team in this league I enjoyed watching the games that I did on MLS season pass so they have like you can watch all the games on there no blackouts 
you know, it's really nice. You can watch it in over a hundred different countries they said launching with, and it's pretty awesome. Um, the quality is better. Like video quality is better than what you, what we had seen with MLS on both Fox or ESPN for that matter, in my opinion, it's, it looked really nice. The commentators were mostly pretty good. There were some that were like, meh. So, I mean, they're already better on that than they were with MLB because that was always the <laughs> biggest complaint with the MLB stuff is that the commentators were just not good, which, to be fair, baseball commentators <laughs> have a really hard job to make that sport interesting to watch on television. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you got to get someone that knows what they're talking about. And so I'll give Apple a pass on that one for now. But when it came to MLS, they chose pretty well, I think, with who they got to do these games. They also have uh, what they call MLS 360. It's basically like a, if you watch NFL, they have what is called the red zone, where they have someone in a studio and then they cut to different games as something exciting is happening, basically. So in NFL, like if somebody's about to, like if they get close to the end zone, they're going to go to that game and they'll start talking about it. And then they'll go to another game and back and forth. That's kind of what this was with soccer. If someone was scoring a goal, they'll go to that game. They'll replay the goal. They'll go to the live commentary on it. And then they'll come back and start talking other stuff. And I watched a little bit of that. It was quite entertaining. Because they're talking not just one game, they're talking all the games, they're talking all the teams. And the studio they built in New York for this is outstanding. Like, it is phenomenal. It is really nice studio. And it was, overall, I was impressed with it. Um, this first weekend was free. I don't know how it's going to be this next weekend. Probably, I th I know they're going to have a few games every week that are going to be free to watch. Um. But if you are a soccer fan, I think it's worth the price. Um, if you don't pay for Apple TV Plus, it's, I think, $14.99 a month or $100 for the whole season. If you do pay for Apple TV Plus, it's $12.99 a month or seventy or no, $80 for the whole season, I think. So not horribly priced, but, you know. But my first impressions on it were positive. I liked it. Um being able to watch things in the app was really nice. Uh, the only downside so far that I'm seeing, and this could very easily be fixed, is the day afterwards, right now, I can't go back and re-watch a game what, mm. from what it appears. If I go click on that game, it's just giving me a recap of that game, basically a 10-minute highlight reel of what happened in that game, which is fine, but there are times where if I didn't have a chance to watch the game live at the time, I would want to, like, you know, start it later. So if I don't have that option, that's kind of an unfortunate thing. Now, you can, if you don't start it right at the beginning and it's still going on, when you go to click on the to watch the game, you can either watch live or watch from the start. So it's giving you that option, which is nice. So it's kind of like a DVR Without being like without having to go in there and select, okay, I want to make sure I can record this game. It'll just kind of does it for you. But again, I don't know once that game is aired, once it's over, I haven't been able to find an option to go back and watch it from start to finish yet. Again, that's something that could very easily be changed and hopefully will because I've seen a decent amount of people complaining about that. So hopefully Apple is listening and will change things. But Overall, I'm liking it so far. So those are my thoughts. I'm not banking on any thoughts from either Wes or Caleb because they don't <laughs> care. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like the the two quote unquote sporting events that I follow. Well, that I have followed in the past are uh, drum corps and freaking disc golf, like PDGA stuff. And yes. yeah, technically you can pay a yearly price to follow the seasons for both of those as well. Um, and I don't like either of them enough to do that. So yeah, I, I'm really not the target audience for this at all. <laughs> yeah. And those aren't available on Apple TV either. So. 
I mean, the long the long play for Apple is to try to get NFL. That's their yeah. they've been pushing for that for a couple of years now. So they're using MLS as kind of a look what we can do, and then eventually maybe they'll get some games. They probably I don't think NFL will ever be exclusive to anyone because it never has been and it's not going to be. There's just way too no. much money. But Apple could do like what Amazon does, and Thursday Night Football is on Amazon. So they could do something like that, where maybe they get Monday Night Football away from ESPN somehow, or they get one game a week on Sunday. I don't know, something like that. But Man, what would that do to ESPN? I mean, ESPN, I don't know. Monday Night Football is a, it's an interesting one. I haven't watched it in a lot of years. But the, yeah. it is getting better because they've gotten like there's there's the normal ESPN broadcast, which is again I think is better now because they got uh, Troy Aikman and Joe Buck that used to be the Fox guys. They stole them from Fox and got them for that, which they, I like them. But they also have you can watch a version of the game with Peyton Manning and Eli Manning, just kind of hanging out watching a game together, <laughs> and it's actually really entertaining. Those guys are hilarious. So that's that's a that's one way to watch. So ESPN is getting better when it comes to that. So I don't think they'll steal it from ESPN. I don't think the I think the easiest play for Apple would be trying to get it away from Amazon, or right. maybe a game or two on Sundays. But again, that it's going to be a while before that happens. Hmm. All right, now some Google news. So Google. Uh, has this fancy little tool inside of Google Photos if you have a Pixel phone that's come out in the last couple of years. It's called Magic Eraser, and it is a cool little tool, and it works well, and it's been a Pixel exclusive for its entire existence up until this past week. Kind of. Well, yeah. So Google announced that if you have a Google One membership. So if you're paying for their cloud storage thing, you can now have Magic Eraser inside of Google Photo inside of Google Photos no matter what your phone is. So this includes any Android phone that has Google Photos and iOS. So this this is actually making it a lot more tempting to get Google One because I use <laughs> Google Photos on a regular basis. I've been thinking about getting it anyways. This is just tipping me over the edge a little bit. And I like this. I think it's I think it's cool. It's funny though because, you know, a couple of weeks ago during the Super Bowl, they had this massive ad campaign about, "Hey, look at Magic Eraser exclusively on the Pixel." And then <laughs> 2 weeks later, they're like, "Oh, never mind, it's everywhere kind of." This, this is what happens when like nobody at your company talks to anybody else at your company is <laughs> exactly. you have your marketing department Whoops. spend literally millions of dollars on a 30 second super bowl super bowl spot to market your phone by advertising a specific feature that your software department has already moved to the cloud and is planning on making available to everybody who subscribes to their services division and yeah. none of these divisions talk to each other and so yeah it's nice job oh. google your organization will woes are are continue to be entertaining. It is just baffling to me that Google functions as well as it does given issues like this. <laughs> yeah, they they have gotten better in some ways, but not all of them and not most of yeah. them. And they but... still have like a half dozen messaging clients like <laughs> Yeah. And and I mean there's a, we'll talk more about this type of thing in a minute, but Keeping on the Google Photos thing. So if you have a Pixel phone that did not have this previously, so basically a non-Tensor chip Pixel phone, this is coming to your phone for free. So you don't have to pay for Google One to get this if you're on a previous generation Pixel phone. So that is nice. Yay. Um, but again, I, I do think it's going to be not quite as fast on other phones because it is using the cloud to do this. Um, I I want it. I would really hope that they could change that on iOS because I mean the A chip is definitely going to be fast enough to yeah. do this. I mean the machine but, learning on the A series chips can do it. I'm sure. 
but it's just I'm it's probably way different, like the architecture on the processor. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it may very well be the kind of thing where in order for that to work, Google would have to rebuild the app from the ground up. It's probably a lot easier to just stick it in the cloud. Yeah. But I do like that this is now available to anybody that wants it on Google Photos. If you have a Google One subscription, like I said, I am very tempted to do that. Mostly for this, because I have been wanting Magic Eraser since they announced it. It's a cool feature. All right, now on to more confusing things that Google does, just because we they don't talk to anybody inside of Google <laughs> or in any of their other companies. So, YouTube Music, which in and of itself is proof that Google just doesn't know what they're doing when it comes to certain things. Yep. Because Google Play Music was a great product, and a lot of people used it. Like, I used it. It did so many things. And then they're like, hey, look at this YouTube music thing. It doesn't work, but we're going to push it like it does. Hey, I use it. <laughs> and it still has problems because it's, I don't know. Ugh. I know you use it, Wes. And a lot of people do use it because it's the only music service that they offer now because they got rid of Google Play Music. And didn't it's true. It's I I don't need to go on a rant. I don't need to go on a rant. Anyways. Um <laughs> so a couple weeks ago we mentioned how Google Podcasts is kind of up in the air. Like Google still says that Google Podcasts is they're still working on it, they're still doing things, you know. But they also announced that podcasts are coming to YouTube music. So, Google, um, yes. what you need to do is keep Google Podcasts as its own thing, for one. And for two, make it, ava- like, have it pre-installed on every Android device, and people will use it. You want to know why Apple Podcasts is the number one used podcasting app? Is because it's pre-installed on every iPhone that gets sold. You want to become the very you want to become num- the number two podcasting app used really quickly. Just have it on your phones, even if it's only on Pixel phones. <laughs> just have it pre-installed. Yeah, don't throw it into YouTube Music, which also is not well. Actually, YouTube Music might be pre-installed on Android devices at this point because it's their default music app. But people aren't gonna. I don't know. Put this is just is so. St- Stupid. <laughs> I that's all uh, I can really say about this. Podcasts are coming to YouTube music. Google, you're dumb. Okay, moving <laughs> on. Speaking of companies being dumb, oh, Meta has to go oh, and one up Elon Musk and uh well, maybe not necessarily one up. They're going to copy Elon Musk by offering a yeah. subscription service if you want to get verified on Facebook, Instagram, or WhatsApp. Now, I will say they are doing a better thing when it comes to being verified. You do have to have a state issued ID to prove that you are who you are. So, <laughs> that is nice, but at the same time, don't give that to Zuckerberg. Do not do it. <laughs> Don't please. Do that. Man. Yeah, it's this is this kind of thing is just super frustrating to me because like, you know, why are all of these companies doing this? Well, it's because people are fleeing their platforms for competing platforms and instead of going, "All right, what is it that the people want? Why are they leaving our platform?" and solving that problem you know going okay let's let's give the users what they want let's make this a really great service for them to use so that they'll stick with us so that we can continue to sell ads and make this this free service available for them instead of doing that they go how let's see how can we wring the last bit of money out of the people that are still here and in the process make it so much worse for them before they flee the app as well like well, how <laughs> yeah. can we, how can we make life worse for our continue like our the people that stuck around <laughs> it's it's just 
and Twitter did this and and now Facebook is doing it and I'm just like guys I uh you know what listener yeah. don't j- just leave Facebook it's fine you don't need it you can ditch <laughs> Instagram too and and Twitter and let's just let all of these giant companies like dissolve into bankruptcy and go away and get replaced by something because I think that would just be beneficial for everyone <laughs> yeah now so the prices on this one, it's a little more expensive than what Twitter Blue is at eight dollars a month. So t- Facebook, well, okay, Meta Verified is what they're calling it, which ugh, it's so dumb. Is <laughs> if you sign up on the web, specifically on their website, it's twelve dollars a month. Or if you sign up via Android or iOS, which is gonna be a lot of people because that's the easier route. It's $15 a month because they don't want to pay or they don't want to, you know, lose on that 30%. They're going to charge yep. the customer for that because they're jerks. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm very upset about this. <sighs> yeah. But that's oh, freaking oh, hate stupid people. And Mark Zuckerberg is just one of those stupid people. Now, yeah. I will say this potentially could be beneficial for some people. Now, those people are the ones that are in the influencer space that are making money off these apps, whether it's Facebook, WhatsApp, or Instagram, because the benefit to this is, I mean, you do get that verification, which proves that you are who you are. And in this case, I think it actually does, whereas on Twitter, it really doesn't. (laughs) Um, And it also helps make sure that your followers are going to see your stuff, which, again, is just even more proof that just it's the algorithms are so stupid. But yes, no. Oh, there's there's a whole rabbit hole surrounding the algorithms on social media sites and how like they are kind of like the harbingers of the end times. Like, forget, you know, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, whatever. We've got the four algorithms of social media, and and that <laughs> is how the world ends. Like, oh, it's so true. That's a so, different rabbit hole. We'll, yeah. we'll not get yep. into that. So, yeah, like I said, this could benefit those people, like the very few people that are, you know, making content and putting it out on these services it could potentially be beneficial to them because the paying that monthly cost isn't going to be it's going to be worth basically more than what they're paying because getting their content out there especially if they're you know getting products that they're advertising for other companies or their own product or whatnot it's going to make them money so in that sense for them it kind of makes sense. I still would say don't do this, but there's going to be people that do. But yeah, so duh, freaking stupid companies doing stupid things need to be given a high five to the face with a chair. <laughs> <laughs> Give them the chair. Yes. Uh, yep. That is all of my tech news for this week. But, Man. but I want to end on a positive. Well, okay, nope, this isn't positive. It's <laughs> it's more positive than what it could have been. So let's start okay. with this. Oh, I've oh, got some yeah. gaming news, but it, do it. Unfortunately, it's 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 not as. I mean, yes, it's positive that I have gaming news, but it's not not the best gaming news. Um, <laughs> so listener. We've talked we talked about this when it first came out. So Rovio, the company behind Angry Birds, um they came out with what they called Rovio Classics Angry Birds, which was basically the first iteration of Angry Birds that you could get on the App Store or the Play Store. And it was great. And you could pay for it. It didn't have ads. It was fantastic. But they just came out this week on Twitter and I'm just going to read what they said here and it's 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 depressing and it just goes to show that companies are going to just do what they want not what our customers want so it says yep we have reviewed the business case of Rovio Classics Angry Birds 
and due to, due to the game's impact on our wider games portfolio, we have decided that Rovio Classics Angry Birds will be unlisted from the Google Play Store on Thursday, February 23rd, which, by the way, has already happened. Additionally, the game will be renamed Red's First Flight in the App Store pending further review. Rovio Classics Angry Birds will remain playable on devices on which the game has been downloaded, even after it has been unlisted. We understand that this is sad news for many fans, as well as the team that has worked hard to make Rovio Classics Angry Birds, that's a horrible name, a reality. <clears throat> we are extremely grateful to the Angry Birds fans who have shown their love of the brand and this game from the beginning. We hope those fans can continue to bring that passion to our live Angry Birds slingshot games such as Angry Birds 2, Angry Birds Friends, and Angry Birds Journey, where our goal every day is to craft the best possible experience for players. That's what they said. Now, in <laughs> case you in case you happen to miss something that they said here, which they're I, I do I do have to hand it to them. They're not lying about what they're doing. They're not trying to sugarcoat it. They're That's blatantly true. saying what's happening. So they said due to the game's impact on our wider games portfolio. Basically, they're not going to give you a premium game that you pay up front for because it's taking away from their free-to-play games that you have to pay in-app purchases on and or have ads on. Yep. Yep. So, the fact... Oh, just... Ugh. Yep. It's, it's pretty sad. They basically took the game that was great for gamers and they're killing it because they want you to pay for microtransactions or watch a bunch of ads in order to play yep. the games. And I did think it was really funny where, you know, they're all like, you know, go to our other games where our goal is to make the best thing is no, no, no your goal is to make the most money possible. Just don't lie. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yes, your, they did. They is, did lie at the beginning. They did. The very true. last sentence is a lie. They said, "Where well, our goal yes. every day is to craft the best possible experience for players." No, if that were no. true, you would keep this other game available. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, our goal is every day to make the most dollars that we possibly can from our players. That's that's your goal. Don't pretend otherwise, Rovio. You're not fooling anybody. Yeah. Yeah, and you're not the only one. Like, yep. oh yeah, <laughs> this is this is not Gosh. this is not just an Angry Birds thing. But it it was honestly kind of refreshing when they released something that was like a premium game that you just paid ninety nine cents for and you owned yeah. the game. Like, what are the freaking odds? I did that, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's 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 sad. It really is. Like, and then they're gonna change the name so it doesn't impact. <laughs> Yeah, it's like they're unlisting it from from Android. I'm pretty sure the only reason they haven't taken it off of the App Store is because like might very well have something to do with Apple Arcade because Angry Birds is in Apple Arcade as yeah. well. And yeah. so like they've all, they've got an agreement with Apple, so that version has to stay there. And obviously they make money off of that version differently anyways, so maybe yeah, that yeah, one does stick around, too. but changing the name of it on the App Store to Red's first flight just means that if somebody goes and searches for Angry Birds, you're not going to find it. Is not going to show yeah. up. <laughs> oh, so bad. So yeah, it's so great. bad. So I mean, uh, it's really uh, it's so. Uh, I yeah, I should have ended <laughs> with better news. This was just not That's, fun. <laughs> and Wes showed or Landon showed up with all of the uh, the rants this week, listener. That doesn't usually happen Listen, no now I you mean, know now you know my frustration with gaming companies right now just talking <laughs> about sony and microsoft and all that crap yeah just a little hint like stuff that gaming companies say right now just so infuriating because it's like just, just say the truth like that's just <laughs> that's all we want just say the truth don't don't sit there and say, listen, Call of Duty, we need it or we just die. We just die if we don't have it. Yeah. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Same as this. Hey, what a segue, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this. Let's go ahead and get uh, into this. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take over the gaming news, all right? I'm assuming that you're already done talking about this. Oh, I, I need to be, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
well, let's get let's get this out of the way. Um, so the reason why I'm bringing up the Activision Blizzard and Microsoft mergers, they had a big meeting uh, with regulators, and Sony was there, and lawyers, and reporters, and everybody was there, and Microsoft was talking about, you know, just showing basically Microsoft versus Sony market shares, this and this. Why is it okay for Microsoft to buy Activision Blizzard? A couple of things I did want to point out. I thought was actually good. One, uh, Microsoft, they had mentioned a 10-year deal of Call of Duty going to Nintendo players, saying that they made a deal for 10 years for Call of Duty. What they also said was for Xbox games as well. I double-checked this because I wanted to make sure they also said other Xbox games other than Minecraft to go to Nintendo. They didn't say Nintendo Switch. They said to Nintendo. Yes. So. That may have just been a legal thing where they were just leaving their options open. Yes. It also may have been that they were inadvertently hinting at development on a console that Nintendo has not yet announced, but which they are privy to because legal stuff be that way. So meaning, but what's interesting is in this contract is that they just signed 10 years for Xbox games right now. Now, if the contract goes through, then Call of Duty will hit will hit over there as well. Yep. So I think that's pretty cool. They're sticking to their, we believe you play wherever you want. And I like this idea. And I like that it said Nintendo and not just switch. Cause then, uh, you know, Nintendo might upgrade their stuff, their hardware, which would be good. <laughs> so that's the first thing. Second that they touched on was they actually, uh, they had other companies there. And obviously, there was the deal with uh, Steam. They're going to keep Call of Duty, and they're going to try and push more Xbox onto Steam and Xbox games as well as um, uh, Activision if it goes through. Uh, you know that was the incentive there as well. But then all of a sudden, from left field, they said, "Oh, by the way, we also just made a ten-year deal with Nvidia." So they were then they had said that this is now a 10 year deal agreeing with NVIDIA to bring all Xbox PC games to the company's GeForce uh, now cloud gaming service. And then with the merger, all Activision, because as of right now, Activision is not on GeForce. Yep. Which is a win there. But also, if you also what one thing that they were saying is if you have Xbox Game Pass. And you just link your NVIDIA account, and then you get all the Xbox Game Pass games that way as well. It's, it's kind of digging deep to see how this will work because NVIDIA GeForce doesn't have a store. You can't buy games. No. It's just kind of linking those accounts is what yep. it is. And so I thought actually this was pretty cool. Like, meaning, like, I mean, it's cool to see that Microsoft is like saying, look, this is what we said we want to do and here it is it's in writing it's legal binding like which is cool i like this which also gives that like i i i I like the idea of cloud gaming and this is that push to help competitors and other people get more into the cloud gaming which is cool which means more competition you know and this is them pushing for it for the cloud yeah so i I will say the deal with geforce now it's kind of cracks me up because like that's one of the things that if you subscribe to PC Games Pass and not to like Games Pass Ultimate, that you don't get. You don't get cloud gaming. And so by making this deal with GeForce Now, essentially what they're saying is, ah, but you do get cloud gaming. You just have to get it through GeForce, not through Microsoft. And I'm like, but why? <laughs> like, wh- <laughs> Like, why well, is they that may... how you're doing this? I'm so confused. I'm kind of wondering if they're going to start changing SKUs soon. They I, might. I, they I'm might. wondering if they will, just to be like, listen, you got PC, Game Pass. You got you just have Game Pass. Here's the cloud game. I think, yeah. I don't know, they might. It, it, it might have something to do with, like, they they want the PC version of the cloud gaming to feel the same as just playing the P, the game on a PC. And what their, their, you know, xCloud's whole thing is that it's running on Xbox hardware. 
not or virtualized right. Xbox hardware, at least not on actual PC hardware, which means you're playing the Xbox version of the game, which is going to have like differences in terms of control layouts and that kind of thing, at least subtle differences in most games. And so maybe they're just saying like, yeah, if we partner with NVIDIA, then do you do it through GeForce now? Then you're getting a PC native experience for your cloud gaming without having to, you know, to to deal with like, oh, OK, wait, if I'm doing cloud stuff, then it's a little bit more Xboxy than it is PC. Right. So I, I don't know. That makes but sense. it's still it's just, there's a couple of things about this to just kind of crack me up. But like, honestly, you can tell that their motivation for it is like freaking whatever prove to the regulators throughout the world that we don't actually care about exclusivity for activision games so that yeah. sony loses their leg to, that they are trying to stand on which makes sense because i believe that i, I believe they don't care about exclusivity for this they yeah. i just don't think they do i think they're doing this for completely unrelated reasons yep. and that uh you know, this is one of the few ca- occasions where I feel like they're actually being honest about their intentions. Yeah, I, it well, kind of I mean, goes back to kind of goes back to our conversation on the last episode, Caleb, with Minecraft on Chrome OS. Yeah. Yes, that uh, I found out before the podcast that West has not listened to yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I cheese Santa, leave me alone. <laughs> anyway, oh, come on, it, it kind of goes back to that where. Like we said, Microsoft doesn't necessarily care as much about their hardware sales and stuff like that. They just, they want, they're actually proving they want the best experience for their customers, which thankfully does still happen in some companies out there. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I really like that they're like, look, this is what we want to do. We're trying to get everyone involved and we're trying to make it so all of our customers can play wherever they want to play as long as they're yeah. I mean, kind of as long as they're playing our games we don't really care where they play it because that's they what also we want. want to play with their friends and whoever they want yeah. exactly it's it very much is the case where like uh you know they have said we don't care about exclusivity and now they're doing everything that they can to prove it and com- big companies don't do that very often you know like apple says that the reason that they think that the app store should be the only way for people to install stuff on iPhones is for security and, you know, privacy reasons, but they haven't like killed the commission that they take off of in-app purchases or anything (laughs) like that to prove that. Like if they were to do that so that the app store doesn't actually make them any money, then everyone would believe them. There would be no other justification for having the app store in that circumstance. And just like they say, the Apple watch is made to save everyone's life and yet you can't use it if you don't have an iphone exactly (laughs) you know so (laughs) it's like companies say things all the time but very rarely do they ever prove that they meant what they said microsoft actually appears to be doing that yeah in this case yeah it's just which is cool I, i yes i've been on the bandwagon of you know this whole play anywhere you want play with whoever on any hardware I'm all for. And and everyone knows I've stated that many times to you guys, the podcast, which is cool. And I, I really enjoy that. And I, I'm glad I was able to get your take on the NVIDIA thing. Cause you know, it, it is something I, as someone that plays Xbox on a console, a lot like Xbox games, I didn't think about when you stream from the browser or from the game pass app on the PC that you're getting an Xbox, uh, yeah, it's it's an Xbox first experience, you know? right? It's and so designed that, for the Xbox, which is cool, which is, which is really cool, which helps that the cloud gaming, the accessibility and everything, which is which is great. I think I think it's great innovation. And that's what I like seeing. And it's cool that they're just signing these deals, which is which is cool. But also like, hey, if this Activision deal doesn't go through, you still get all the Xbox games like it's just like true. here. Yeah. Like we believe in this so much that even if this it's not like. You have to make this deal go through or else you get nothing. It's no, here's 10 years. You know, <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Here, here. They had it for everybody. The one thing I did have to laugh at with Sony there and their lawyers, um, I think his name's Brad Smith, got up there and he's like, oh, and here's the contract for 10 years for Sony that they still haven't signed, which I'm holding right here. You're more than welcome <laughs> to sign right here. I have for <laughs> Call of Duty, like, like he full on was right there, like Jim. What was his name? Jim Ryan, <laughs> dude, right there. Like, 
right here. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Sony's it, it's not funny. gonna sign that. <laughs> well, they're um it's funny. Like there's some interesting things that are happening and right now and, and it's interesting because right now they're kind of pretty much have where you know it's, it's, what's really interesting to think is right now Google's kind of on the on the end playing with Sony like yeah we maybe don't want this deal but if they would have kept Stadia alive this last year they would have a 10 year deal with all Activision <laughs> games and everything if they would have just kept it alive just a little sooner like they would have waited three extra months. That's all they needed. Three months. Three more like, months. No, no, seriously. <laughs> like they were saying they had to cancel Stadia because acquisitions like this. No, no, no. But if no, you no. would have waited. No. What happened? What happened? And this just goes back to our previous conversation. So this was in discussions <laughs> with someone at Google. It's just they didn't tell the right they people. They didn't tell anyone else. True. True. So <laughs> there's somebody at Google. It's like, oh, oh. Crap, I knew I forgot something. What's that? We could have partnered. Like, how how interesting would have been if they did partner with Stadia to use Stadia's technology for the cloud gaming? Like, like, see, it's this stuff. Oh, it drives me nuts. Innovation because of... Oh, sorry, here's my rant. <laughs> I've, I've said this. The innovation of gaming just went down the tube because of this deal, and everyone's being chicken. Like, oh, sorry. Because people like Sony and they're being jerks, they really are. You can't say they're not. Now, Microsoft, I do feel for the Microsoft employees right now, like gaming people that are working there when Microsoft goes in and says, hey, we're making lots of money and you guys are doing great. But then they go to regulators saying, look, we suck. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that I could feel. I get that. But like, I don't know. There's my frustrations because sometimes I hear these things and this silly stuff that bureaucracy and things like that. I'm just like, really? Like everyone wants this except Sony. And Google just did it because, I don't know, Sony is going to give them a deal on something. I don't know. But now I don't know that for sure. I'm just saying that out loud. But <laughs> just annoys me as well. And I just hope this goes. I'm going to be honest. I hope this goes through just soon. But the last thing I heard is the latest date for, I think it's the FTC to really pass or give something on this is like August. Mm. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. So there's probably going to be more news um, on this. I I wish it was just pass and be done, but we'll see. Uh, also, let's go ahead and move on from that. I did want to talk about moving on from that. Uh, Microsoft also uh, said that they are putting out uh, the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate friends and family plan to six new countries. Sadly, it's not mine. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So they did say that beginning today, Xbox players in Chile, Hungary, Israel, New Zealand, South Africa, and Sweden will be able to join the plan. It enables up to the five friends and family for Game Pass Ultimate. So congratulations really want this <laughs> for over here which is great so what's nice to see is that the first initial launch apparently there's some success to this so then they're releasing it a little more a little more good good to hear yeah um let's go ahead and move on uh something i did want to mention uh microsoft flight simulator just continues to be so cool and awesome not just in technology, but also with this new update that's coming out, um, which makes me want to download this almost 200 gigabyte game again. <laughs> Should have oh, kept man. it on my hard drive. <laughs> but they are now releasing the next world update, which is New Zealand. But they are adding Hobbiton. <gasps> nice. In this. Oh. The, like the movie set of Hobbiton. So you can fly over. And I'm so it's the fly okay. over. Forget that. I'm crashing into it. Right? Okay. Like, just <laughs> my my question here is is if you do fly into the area, does your plane all of a sudden change to giant eagles? <laughs> How cool would that oh, be? Oh, they should. haven't said anything. But Microsoft, you can have that one for free. Come on, yes, come on. <laughs> right. I mean, they have they have their own. Uh, store and people are adding stuff all the time to this so this Mm. i mean 
Listen, if people can ride uh, Shrek in Hogwarts Legacy because they modded their broom to look like Shrek. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying. Uh, Also, with that announcement with Fly Simulator, they did announce that the new uh, Forza Horizon 5 DLC is coming out. It's a rally DLC. Uh, It's supposed to be kind of fun, just kind of more off-roading rally type. That's also coming out, too. You can take that. Take a look at that as well. Uh, Sony, they had a state of play. Um, I actually did not watch it, but, you know, having Sony games, I they had it kind of, from what I heard, was dumbed down quite a bit. But they did have a big, the big announcement, I guess, or trailer they had was for Suicide Squad, that new one that's coming out. Um, yeah. A lot of people are, it's very mixed. Very mixed. It's either you really dislike this or you really like it. There is no, like, eh. <laughs> So those are the best kinds of games. <laughs> so we'll see what this is. I think a lot what it is is a lot of people I think in Rocksteady and they're like Batman Arkham. Those are really good mm-hmm. single player, but this is their first hit at a multiplayer. Yeah. So a lot of people are a... saying this is Crackdown 4. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very much a case of like I think that the people who hate it are the people who hate live service games. And to be fair, I get that live service games, generally speaking, suck um, because they're in- exceedingly grindy. And then after a year or two, they shut down the servers and you lose all of your progress and any money that you put into it. That's what happened with Anthem. And like, yep. it is an anomaly that Destiny 2 continues to be a thing, you know? So I mean, that's Bungie, man. They're good at what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So. But, but, you know, like. You look at Anthem, you look at the Marvel's Avengers game, like there's a very strong desire for games like that to just kind of die out because generally speaking, they don't last. They just don't work. And so I think that's where most of the hatred is coming from. Gotcha. That makes sense. And then uh, last but not least for my gaming news, I did want to mention uh, it's kind of mobile game news. Uh, Bethesda Softworks has uh, released or a so you could pre-register for this game. It's called Mighty Doom. Mm -hmm. It is uh, a mobile game. (laughs) Definitely a mobile game. It it really is. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, you basically you're the Doom Slayer, but as a toy form and you're going around killing all the other toy demons. Uh, monsters and demons that are yeah. in toy form. It's it's super bizarre to see like, oh, it's like chibi demons. Ah, uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Such a strange aesthetic. Okay. <laughs> what what I have heard, this is definitely a uh cash grab. Yeah. Definitely. Um what's What's sad is apparently apparently so people that have tried this already, they've come out and I I was kind of looking into it. Um so it is about you have like a certain amount of energy you can do once you run out of energy you're out for the for however many hours or you can pay money to get more energy. Mm-hmm. There are skins in this game where you can pay money to buy but it is not a multiplayer game so you're just buying skins for yourself. <laughs> so yay. But yeah. it, I've I looking at it it seems okay it could be addicting but I mean if you're a free to play person you you may just have enough time to Hop on mess and then hop out. So, yeah, I actually pre-registered just because I'm like I like Doom. Why not? I'm gonna give it a try and just <laughs> mess with it. I don't. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna get any skins or anything because that seems silly. Yeah. No, yeah, but uh, I'll See, take it with it. This, and, this is funny to me because it's very, very obvious that you two are both not mobile gaming people. <laughs> you are correct. Look, I, I get, like mobile I, games. <laughs> I hate bad mobile games. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But it's just it's just so funny to me to listen now, to I, you guys talk so, about mobile games. So I will say that like there are a few free to play mobile games that I actually really, really like a lot. It's not just the premium games, though, to be fair. Stuff like Monument Valley and the Alto games and that kind of thing are the mobile games that I like the most. One flat payment and you own the thing. There's no ads. That's great. 
Fire Emblem Heroes is a good example of a mobile game that I consider to have been done extremely well. For me, who is a casual player, who is kind of just there to play through like the stories and casually collect and build teams slowly and stuff like that, yeah. I never run out of energy. It's impossible. I, I literally played that game for like four straight hours one time, just trying to run out of energy, <laughs> and I couldn't. Like, it was not possible. So the only way to run out of energy in that game is if you get to be really high level, you play the game extremely seriously, and then you're, yeah, you, you're playing against, you're doing the multiplayer stuff, you're playing against other people, and eventually you will start to run out of energy in that case, in which case, yeah, you're going to need to put some money into the game in order to continue to play it the way that you have. So basically, if you're the type of person who is putting load on their servers and making it so that they have to pay for the uptime for their multiplayer, then you have to pay them to do that. Whereas me, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not basically draining them of money, so they're not actually charging me anything. And and I appreciate that in games like that. And so there, there's mobile games like that 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 work well. And honestly, this might be one of them, listener. I I don't know. The way that it's been described, it feels a little bit more cash grabby and, and evil than that. But there are we'll games that are fine that work that way. It's just that, yeah, I mean, Landon's not wrong. When it comes to mobile games, I prefer premium mobile games that I can just buy once. And that's that's why I'm subscribed to Apple Arcade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. Well, the thing that got me the most was with you guys was. The skins thing, it's like, okay, to me, I look at that and I think, okay, because you're like, the only reason, like, well, you said it's not a multiplayer game, so why am I buying skins? Like, the skins to me, like, in other games is for me to look at. Why do I care what other people think about my character? <laughs> so, to me, that's the only reason you buy skins anyways is because it looks better. I think it looks cooler. What I don't know. Is there another reason to buy to gain skins in other games other than to make you think it looks cooler who cares what other people think how your character looks that's I my think that's thought. that's not necessarily a mobile gaming thing i think that's just a difference in like general you know consensus well that's that's the sentiment the i got from cosmetic and skins from what well, i said yeah. i mean that's from what you guys both of your reactions to that were identical and like why would you get skins in a mobile game it's just for you you're the only one seeing it like, duh, that's why you buy skins in any game, isn't it? Well, okay, I think my my reaction to this can best be summed up as I will never pay money for skins or cosmetics in any way, shape, or form. And that, that's so fine. the fact that they're charging money for skins, I'm just like, nope, I'm out. And it doesn't matter if it's in a mobile game, doesn't matter if it's in a multiplayer yeah. game, doesn't matter if it's single player or something like that. Like, I love going into The Witcher 3 and, you know, dressing Geralt up and making him look silly and stuff like that. Like, that's... That's good fun. I don't have to pay extra money for that. And and Overwatch, right. like, I loved having a bunch of skins in Overwatch. One, back when you could get them without having to spend money <laughs> oh, and or play the game for literally 40 hours a week. Like, it's, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. But now I couldn't care less about their skins because you have to either play the game 40 hours a week to get them or pay money. Like, literally, like single skins cost 20 bucks and stuff like that so you know it's it's uh that that's my take on it. it's not necessarily like well i don't understand why you if you can't have other people see them why would you buy skins mine is just why would you buy skins i i, I don't fair <laughs> so. enough i guess on my take i was saying that but then but then i'm here thinking i'm like oh i've considered buying like on a final fantasy game and strictly single player to have an outfit in a, from a different Final Fantasy game that I like, and I'm like, okay, fair enough. I would probably do that. <laughs> so I get that. But no, I guess I was more on the lines of like, it's fun to have people be like, well, you got that accomplishment, or you did this, and you got a skin. I guess this is going back to my old Warcraft days, where it's like, well, he got the cool armor piece, or this piece. And so, yeah. I, you know, I think that's kind of where that stemmed from. Yeah, gotcha. back when your cosmetics were tied to what you've actually done in the game, as opposed yeah. to just a storefront. But I will give it, I will say this, I'm sure it's Bethesda and it's Doom and I'm sure there's going to be some wicked cool skins that even I'd be like, 
I'm gonna be honest. There was one in the Doom Eternal where you are the Doom guy, but you're dressed as Commander Keen. Oh, and I that's and, great. And, 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 and that's that was a I think that was a free drop at one point. You just had to just log into the game, and I was like, okay, you got me there. <laughs> and Doom <laughs> is a single player game. On yeah, that, so you yeah, got me I, there. I mean, I I I don't I haven't played any of these higher quote unquote higher end mobile games. I play a lot of dumber mobile games. But any game that I've played that has these cosmetic things, again, they're only for me, but I can pay to get them, yes, but I can also just wait, and eventually I will get them. It's not like, you know, that only the only yeah. option is to pay. And, and maybe that maybe there are games where the only option to get these things is to pay. Oh, right, too. <coughs> again, Sorry, I'm, I, I, I'm talking... <laughs> I'm, I know, I know. I'm talking exclusively mobile games. Again, there probably yeah. are those games, and this maybe that's the case. But I can also see the fact that okay, yeah, you can pay to get all these things right now, or you can, as you do things in the game, eventually as rewards in part aspects of the game, you get things like that. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's how I, I always I play games. Is like I wait until it's like oh. That's a like I I think I can see all the different like I there's a car game I have. I can see all the different paint jobs that I can get for this car. It's like, oh that's a cool one. I'll wait till it comes up in a you know, prize box or something like that. I'm not gonna pay Yeah. You know. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping there is something like that. I didn't I didn't know if there was also a progression to it. Sometimes there's just like this is only you pay money and this is how you get the skin. Yeah. And I think that's where I was like, ooh, but if there's a progression thing and I'm all for it because I'm old school progression. You earn yeah. something cool like that. Like I'm for that. Yeah, we all but, know you're the achievement whore here. Oh, I really <laughs> am. <laughs> I, I really I, am. I'm not gonna lie though. I'm kind of the same way. Like, I just I just re-downloaded Carrot Weather and it's got all the achievements. I'm like, oh crap, I gotta get all those. <laughs> Listen, this is this is how bad of an achievement whore I am. So I played Batman Arkham City three times. Once was on the 360. Second is I bought it right for the computer, but it was like the right before they did Xbox Live on the computer, it was like Windows Live. Mm. So I got double the achievements there. And then they remastered it and put it on the Xbox One. So it went from 360 to Windows, then remastered it, and then you get all new achievements. I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, I get. I'm gonna. Yes, I am. I I, mean, I can't. I can't give you too much crap because there's a Sudoku game that I have on my phone, and I had it on my Android phone as well, and it did not copy over my progression. You know, there's a daily <laughs> yeah. Sudoku game you can do, and you get these stars on every day. I went back when I when I got my iPhone and did an entire year's worth of games because, so I could get all those stars back. <laughs> so I, I understand. I'm kind of the same way. And then there's me who spends 70 hours playing an RPG and gets to the end and it's all like, like I've finished the main quest. I finished the vast majority of the side quests. And then you look at my quote unquote percentage complete of the game, which is based on like the achievement, like, you yeah, can see, achievements. okay, hours spent in game. Okay, here's the percentage of the achievements you've gotten. I'm like, eight percent or something like that <laughs> like i i'm yeah. nowhere even close to quote unquote completing the game and i just don't care i'm done like whatever you finish the storyline i'm good yeah yeah pretty much no, i i i remember i was getting down a bad path of that where it's like i would play a game just to get the achievements and then just not enjoy it so i had yeah. to, i've had to restructure my thought like because i completed diablo 3 on the xbox and got all the achievements and then i was like i never have to play this again but yeah. then i'm like no i i, I need to play like I, that's <laughs> totally not what <laughs> now yeah. i will i will say i am kind of a combination of the two of you because if i'm playing a game that has a story or it's like there's an end point to this game i will try and get to that point rather than do this level all the achievements do this level you know i'll get through it and then i'll go back and then yeah. do all the extra side things or whatnot on games. Oh, me? No. As soon as side stuff comes <laughs> up, I get every side thing I can. Then I move the story <laughs> forward. Then side, like, that's why it takes me forever for RPGs. 
Yeah. It like takes you, you know, 200 hours to play a 40 hour game. Oh, dude. My last, <laughs> what, what was my last big RPG? Maybe it was Dragon Age Inquisition. It might have been, but like it took me out. Like, if you go look, you probably could on the Xbox. If you go look through my <laughs> games and go to like see how many hours, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You know, one thing I do miss that Xbox used to do on the 360 is when you would get an achievement, like certain achievements, they would give you like a cosmetic for like your Xbox avatar. So like Red Dead Redemption, you get a certain achievement, then you get like Marston's hat and his Mm -hmm. pistol or like you get Laura Croft's bow. And, you know, and I I miss that because sometimes you'd also get like uh, from like Castle Crashers, you get like a Castle Crasher helmet for beating some uh, something or an achievement. I was like, that's pretty cool. But I obviously avatars are long gone, but it'd be cool kind of a that that stems back from my Warcraft days, like I said. Like you worked for it and when you got it everyone was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then there's me where basically if the game is not entertaining me with gameplay or some kind of interesting story, uh, I'm out. And and that's why like mobile game cosmetics that are locked away behind oh, you just have to wait for them to pop up. I never get those because most of those games don't hold my attention for long right. enough. And I'm just like, ah, okay, whatever. It's But then there are games that do hold my attention for long enough, which is why I had at one point, I mean, they keep adding characters to it, but at one point I had something like 90% of the available characters in Crossy Road unlocked on my account. <laughs> just just through the free, like, you know, oh, I collected yeah. enough coins to roll 100 and, and get a draw and and that's counting the ridiculous frequency of duplicates in that game so like yeah if the game is good then sure i'll play it that long but most of the time it does not happen a perfect example of that for me is super mario run yeah no Mm. kidding i've (laughs) i've gotten every single achievement and every single award you possibly can on that game but I still play it because it's a fun game. Because it's fun. Yeah. that's I really like it when the developers focus on making the game fun and having that be the reason why you continue to play instead of trying to make the game like some kind of social addiction or something like that. And, you know, I appreciate it when they make the game more like, I don't know, really good food than they make it like nicotine. You know, <laughs> like nobody that comes is such back a good to smoking example. because so a good of the taste. They come back because they're chemically addicted to it. Whereas people come back to a good restaurant because the food is good, not because they're chemically addicted to it. <laughs> Anyways. Hey, who says there's to... no cocaine in your pizza over there? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I am confident that there is no cocaine. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, least, we got on a rant. Eighty-five percent. Yeah, that was a huge. <laughs> that was a we... huge tangent of achievement. <laughs> Sorry, I that didn't was, expect that, was that at fault. all. That was my fault. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, it's good because you're getting all sorts of different. It, it, it's good because you see the different points of view on a yes, mobile yes. game versus all this thing, which is why we have this because it's good. Because there's times that I'll be stuck in my way, and Landon will say something, or Caleb, say, and I'm just like, never thought of it that way. That's good. This is good. Here we go. All right. That's actually all my gaming news. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and go over to swing it over to Caleb. Caleb, what do you got for gaming? Um, Guys, I didn't bring any rants today. I don't know what's happened. Uh, uh, me and, me and Landon got that I'm, covered. I'm pretty sure that I saw some pigs fly past the window just now. So, um, listener, all of my gaming news is neutral to good. So wow. I, I guess that's that's where we're going here. Uh, first off, this is kind of okay. So technically, this is Apple TV Plus news, but it's gaming. Trust me, Apple is producing a movie about Tetris. Now oh, I saw no, that. I saw that. Like you hear <laughs> that, and you think to yourself, "Okay, how are they going to turn falling blocks into the Emoji Movie and make it terrible?" But no, what this actually is is a biopic about the process of getting Tetris bundled with the original Game Boy. And like everything that went into that, because the game was developed by a Russian during the Cold War. Yeah. And so there's like international politics involved with this and everything. So it actually looks pretty interesting. I'm I'm kind of excited to see that. My my favorite part of the trailer 
is how they tied in the Tetris theme to, yeah. you know, real mu- like actual songs that are in, you know, available to listen to. It's yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> it is. It's it's it looks pretty cool. Looks really good. So. Um okay, next thing. Uh PlayStation, the PSVR. That is a thing that has launched PSVR 2. Um, now available to purchase for more than the cost of your PS5. Hey, so that's cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, handful of launch titles with this thing. Uh, I think probably the most interesting launch title for it, from my perspective, is the uh, Horizon Forbidden West spinoff thing. Um, because yes. I don't know, Horizon has a really interesting setting to me. That's a very interesting sci-fi setting. Like it quite a bit, and. I would love to explore that in VR. So looks interesting to me, but I have neither a PS5 or the desire to buy a PS5. So or the desire to buy two PS5s because that's the it, cost of this. Basically, yeah. yeah. So that, that's I'm not going to be playing it, but I don't know. Maybe I'll watch a VR walkthrough of it on my Quest. I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not I really any it. other way to experience this. You know, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Still want to try that VR? Uh, what is it, Alex from Valve? Yeah, they would have put that good. on there. That's a selling one right there. I'm just yep. saying. Well, you know, I can plug my Quest into my computer and I could actually play that. It would be have you super, have you tried it yet? Super low frame rate, but <laughs> <laughs> I might puke. But it's okay. I I don't need a powerful graphics card for VR. What are you talking about? Who said? Yeah, this? Wes, who said that? Wes, you have a VR headset. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but my PC would explode. Okay, just just upgrade your GPU. They're like actually reasonably priced now. All kind right. Of. Well, I, well, I probably if you buy have to upgrade my one. processor, wouldn't I? Uh, it's in like an i five, isn't it? It's an i three. It's the eighth gen. Oh, it's remember an you helped me. Buy, you oh. helped me buy this thing. Remember, it is yeah, four it's, core. It's been a long time. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. Okay, you probably would need to upgrade like your entire PC. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. <laughs> okay. So speaking of upgrading your entire PC listener, uh, this has nothing to do with that. Polymega is a company. <laughs> they they make a retro game emulation console is essentially what it is. It's kind of a standalone console that is uh, the base unit is designed to emulate all of the CD based game consoles of your youth. So the Sega Saturn, the PlayStation 1 and 2 and so on and so forth. Um and they have modules you can add on to it that will accept cartridges for like the N64 and the NES and the uh d- no the Dreamcast was CD based wasn't it wasn't there a Sega console before like that that small... was yeah uh, I, I can't remember but you know cartridge yeah there consoles. was a there was a Sega CD but yeah yeah so like there was Sega CD and I swear that that was anywho point is. They make this console, right? That's what Polymega does. It's kind of an expensive console, especially if you need to add on a bunch of, um, you know, modules to it. But it lets you play your library of retro games on your TV like uh, you like you own the console, you know, <laughs> without you having to maintain a whole bunch of old consoles, which is nice. They have announced this past week that they are making an app to bring their game emulation library and support to many devices they didn't really specify but you know you can assume some mobile devices computers other game consoles possibly and essentially the app is going to take their console emulation technology like all of the emulators and the library that they've built around that to all of their supported devices uh and if you're paying for their premium subscription for the thing then you will be getting stuff like cloud library syncing and cloud save syncs and stuff like that now to be clear that's if you pay for the premium stuff. The app will be available for free in some format. Um, so as as somebody who has definitely dabbled more than a bit with old console emulation on computers and stuff like that, when you come across an emulator or an emulation environment that is easy to use, that allows you to basically just okay, here's my game, I stick it in, and it works. That is uh-huh. super, super rare. The vast majority of the time, it requires a whole bunch of configuration, and even then, you're not guaranteed anything. If you've ever messed around with RetroArch, you know what I'm talking about. Very powerful tool, awesome that it's open source, but 
yeah, it's probably worth, you know, going to a company that gets paid to do this sort of thing to get, make it easy. And that's essentially what Polymega is advertising with the free version of their app. You're basically going to get your, your RetroArch desktop environment, except with no configuration, so that you can play all of your old games on whatever. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. They're also advertising compatibility with variety controllers as well. I, I guess that matters to people that don't just use keyboards for everything. But yeah, so if you've got a big old library of retro games that are not retro PC games, uh, then yeah, you should definitely check this out. I probably will check it out when it goes live. Um, and yeah, let maybe I'll let you know what I think, listener. I want to know. <laughs> All right. I'm going to move on from that to our indie game spotlight of the week, because I promised we were going to be doing that to prove that people are still doing interesting things in the gaming space, despite the fact that all of the large publishers and developers have been locked up in this whole Activision purchase thing for the past year. So the game of this week is File Destined. Okay. Now what this is, is a psychological survival horror game. Uh, think Resident Evil or Layers of Fear, stuff like that. Not really my jam, uh, but here's the key. Metavision Studios, the developer and publisher of this game, did it in Unreal Engine 5. Oh. Which is a thing that you would expect to have happened from major developers at this point. You know, really super pretty Unreal Engine 5 games. But it hasn't happened. And do you know why it hasn't happened? Well... AAA development takes longer than indie development. And also, these developers have been locked up in, you know, litigation and crap like that surrounding the Activision purchase for the past year. So, okay, we're relying on the indie developers to actually do something with this. Yep. And the fact of the matter is, File Destined looks outstanding. It seems like it's a pretty good showcase for even what even indie developers can do with Unreal Engine 5. Small teams just working on a tightly integrated experience can do something pretty incredible. So if you're looking for some psychological horror that you want to, you know, that you can play through a fairly short game and, you know, it's an indie game. It's not like a super long Resident Evil length experience or anything like that. But if you like that kind of thing, definitely worth checking out. And now we come to my final piece of gaming news. In which, yeah, we're we're just going right back to it. The best people on the internet do modders. So, yes, the best the best versions of this segment always involve the game running on something you would not expect. Now, I I hate to maybe lower your expectations a little bit this time, listener, but we've already talked about running or about playing Doom on a Lego brick. That True. That is, in fact, a thing we've already discussed. Somebody embedded a tiny OLED display into one of the slanted Lego bricks and played Doom on a separate processor running on this tiny little display. Yep. So that guy didn't stop there. <laughs> <laughs> he did not stop there. He's now playing Doom on a Lego brick. Except it's completely self-contained. It's not nice. just a display. It's a microprocessor <laughs> embedded into that same Lego brick. And he's got a second Lego brick stuck onto the bottom of it that has an integrated gyro in it. Okay. Which is what's allowing him controls. <laughs> so basically you tip, you tip the, the brick to move Doom Guy around, tip it forward, sideways, back, you know, in order to get him to move forward and to the side and everything like that and turn. And then he has capacitive studs, right? Little capacitive touch sensors for the studs on top of the brick to fire your weapons. You just tap on that and it shoots. It looks absolutely awful to play, but it's it's playable. That's amazing. Dude is playing Doom on a fetching Lego brick. Like we were just talking about the tiny little keychain Game Boy thing that they got Doom running on. Like, oh, was that like three weeks, four weeks ago or something like that? Here's yeah. a dude running it on something much smaller. <laughs> so, yeah. That's amazing. I just I just can't with these guys. Doom modders. What do you say? 
you're awesome. Legitimately yep. the best people on the internet. S- seriously, it's so great. So there you go, listener. I hope that that was a nice, bright ending to the tech news for you. Um, and, and that's that's what I got. Which is good. Very good. After this, everything else that we talked about on this episode, we needed a great <laughs> ending. Yeah, right. yeah. This is, I got yeah. like so many high notes there. Tetris movie. You know, somebody is actually doing something with Unreal Engine 5. Retro consoles. Doom on a Lego brick. That's. Yeah. <laughs> All good not, news. Not normal for you, but hey. I know. I had this like nothing to rant about. I'm feeling pretty good. I don't know. This is so strange. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, I think that's the end of the episode. Unless Landon has one more thing. Nope. 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 I mean, I could oh. rant some more, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> ah, fair enough. All right, dear listener. If you have anything you wanted us to talk about or want to get a hold of us, you can at our social media platforms, also at callingallplatforms.com. If you want to check out any of our videos, you can take a look at them on uh, Calling All Platforms on YouTube. All right, dear listener, have a good week. Bye-bye. See ya. Calling All Platforms is a production of Supporter Sound Studios. To learn more about how you can support the podcast, go to www.patreon.com slash calling all platforms.